Folks, uh, hello and welcome to week five. What I want to do uh, to get you started this week, uh, it's important, I think, to make sure that we have the mechanics of Excel down and understand these before we get into the nuts and bolts of uh, linear regression. So uh, I don't want there to be any uh, uh, anybody uh, getting frustrated over that. So what I've done is I've got your Excel exercise up here, and what I'm going to do is uh, walk you through the steps to at least get the Excel results that you need, and then from there you can do the interpretation that's necessary. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, uh, the first, uh, I believe the first uh, three questions of the exercise and probably the first three questions of the case will be similar, where you're doing uh, work uh, in just a simple linear regression, which means one independent variable and one dependent variable. And what I'm going to want you to do there is uh, build uh, build scatter plots, and then uh, on the scatter plot you can uh, you can put some marks on there to give you a regression equation and your value of r squared, and that's pretty simple. So let's uh, for the for the exercise I want you to do. A, a scatter plot for both of the independent variables here. Both of the, the independent variables here are PE ratio and risk. Return is the dependent variable. So let's, I'm just going to do one of these real quick and then if you see one, it's very simple after that. So, uh, so I'm going to do, uh, I will do risk and return. And the thing to note here, uh, when you do these, when you do these scatter plots, you're going to want the, the data in adjacent columns. So if you wanted to do PE ratio and return, you'd have to, you know, you can just copy and paste this and put it in between the B and the C cells, and then you can run that uh, as well. But I'm just going to do risk and return. So the easiest way to do this is just highlight the data. And then if you go to the insert tab here, I'm sorry, the insert palette, and there's a number of different charts uh, right here in the middle of the page. And uh, if you look at this little drop down right here, this is our scatter plot. So if you just click on that uh, and you click scatter and very simply, uh, you have uh, your scatter plot, and uh, so it's uh, again, it's basically looking at these. Uh, let's see, 15 points as ordered pairs, and if you count them up, there's 15, 15 dots on the map here or on the chart. So uh, from here, what we want to do is we want to uh, find the regression equation that models this data and the R squared value. So the easiest way to do that is if you just put your cursor on any one of these points and you right click and you'll have an option down here to add a trend line and the one that we want to add is a linear trend line and the uh, radio buttons already clicked for that and in order to get uh, the regression equation in R squared all you need to do is scroll down to the bottom and where it says display equation on chart that will be the regression equation that models the data and there's your regression equation and let's see uh, Let's see here. How did I? Let me just close this out here. Sorry about that. I just need to right click again. Uh, trend lines. So there we go. And then I'm going to go back down here. So I've already uh, displayed the equation on the chart. Let's just, we can just do this again. I don't think it likes when I click there. So that is, that's, we will not do that. And then if we click on uh, display the R squared value on the chart, and there is your value of R squared. And so <clears throat> this is the equation of the line that, uh, you know, as you've gone through the reading, that minimizes the, the square of the residuals between the estimated value and the actual value of the dependent variable. So that is how uh, you will get the um, the scatter plot and the regression information that you need in order to answer uh, probably questions one, two, and three. So let me, I'm just going to move this so I don't have to move data around and I'm just going to take out this chart. I think everybody saw how to do that. Uh, the thing we want to take a look at now is uh, the multiple regression and that's a little more challenging. So obviously uh, when we start talking about multiple regression, we're talking about, it, it's multiple in the sense that we have more than one independent variable uh, that is that we are using to predict the value of y and uh, and you know from the reading obviously there's nothing visual that you can do here there is no scatter plot there is no three-dimensional chart that we can build in Excel uh, so uh, as you've gone through the reading here uh, you know that you're going to have to uh, uh, play a play an add-in here for uh, Excel so if you go up here to the file menu and you go down to options 
and if you go to add-ins, click on add-ins, and let's see, let's go down here to uh, the Excel add-ins, and we'll click go. And what we want to make sure we've clicked on here, uh, obviously we've already played with Solver, so Solver has been added in uh, to our Excel software. But what we want to make sure we've got here is this analysis tool pack. So click on the analysis tool pack and hit OK. And then uh, let's see, if we go to data, click on your data tab, and over here on the right you'll see this data analysis uh, option. If you click there and you scroll down, you will see that there is a regression option here. All right, and this is how we're going to get the regression results uh, for our multiple regression scenario here where we have two independent variables, P-E ratio and risk, that are predicting the return of an investment. So let's, uh, let's see, let's do this. Let's just click on regression and hit OK. And if you've gone through the book, you, this, uh, this palette should look very familiar to you. The thing you want to make sure you understand here is that uh, the first option here that you're going to input is your Y variable, your dependent variable. So all you have to do is click on return and scroll in all the data and you should have C1 through C16. Before I forget, uh, since we clicked return and return is part of this uh, input, let's make sure that we click the labels option here so we know that the first entry here is the label uh, of the variable. So then to put in the X or the independent variables, Make sure, number one, that the uh, independent variables are in adjacent cells because we're going to do this all at one time. So just click on PE ratio, pull your cursor to the right, pull down, and this will give you uh, both uh, PE ratio and risk. And so we've given uh, Excel all the data we need here. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm gonna. I don't. Let's see. Do I want? I don't want residuals. I don't want any standardized residuals. I think let's let's go simple for now. I think this is good. So don't click any of these other options. Uh, let's see. And I will just uh, let's click on the output range and I'll find a cell here so it's very easy for us to see here. We'll just put it in E3 and let's hit OK. And this is something that uh, you should see that looks very similar to what you see in Excel uh, as you've gone through the reading. So let's just take a look here at what we've got. And um, when, you do, uh, when you do your work for the Excel, the Excel exercise, I hope this is what you come up with here. Now, there's a lot of statistical information here, uh, and we're not going to cover all the statistical information here this week. There are just a couple things that uh, we want to do. Uh, to kind of uh, get a brief introduction to regression. So I want to show you the things that are important this week. Now, we've talked about the value of R squared when we look at simple linear regression. And remember, the R squared value tells you the, the percentage of variation in the dependent variable that's explained by the independent variable. And the closer you get to 100% uh, to, uh, or 1, uh, the better the model is or be the better the data is. Uh, here we use an adjustment. There's an adjustment to the R squared value simply because we've added uh, another variable. It starts to explain uh, more of the variation in the dependent variable, but uh, as you've gone through the reading, there's basically a tempering of that excitement uh, because we've, you know, it's not just because we've added another variable. So when you look at the uh, the measure of the goodness of fit, sometimes it's referred to, and I, I like that term. Uh, for a multiple regression scenario where you have more than one independent variable, you're going to want to look at the adjusted uh, R-squared value. And that adjusted R-squared value uh, for this model is about uh, 0.8 or 80%. So 80% of the variation in uh, return is explained by P-E ratio and risk. So that's pretty, that's a good thing. And uh, so if you're a big investment guy or gal, uh, maybe that um, rings true to you. Now, let's see, uh, let's not worry about standard error. Observations 15, it means there's 15, 15 data sets here, so to speak, uh, and we can count them up, and that's 15. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we'd like to, but we're not going to talk a whole lot about uh, the analysis of variance here. This really, really low number, let me just tell you very quickly, this really, really low number here means the model that you're going to have from the regression results uh, statistically is good, so that's a good thing. 
what you're interested in this week uh, to answer some of, or answer questions four and five in your exercise in case uh, are these three values right here. The intercept, the coefficient of PE ratio, and the coefficient of risk. And very similar to what you had when you did simple linear regression, you had a regression equation that you uh, we were able to show on the scatter plot. And you're going to use that, that equation to start making some predictions uh, about return uh, based on PE ratio. Uh, actually, I think we did risk. It doesn't matter, but uh, there's the question in the exercise. Um, I believe it, uh, or yeah, I'm, I'm quite certain it, uh, it asks you about uh, a relationship between PE ratio and return. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to just move this data you'll have to move the PE ratio data in between the risk and return, and then you can run your scatter plot and put your regression information on here. But the key thing uh, that we want to get after here is uh, these three values. So uh, let me just, uh, let's see here. Let's just do this real quickly so everybody is clear. So the regression equation that comes from these results will look something like this. So It'll be y hat, so the estimated value of return here is equal to b naught, b naught, plus b1 x1 plus b2 x2. Now, now that you have this information, it's going to look like this. So y hat is equal to uh, minus 2.5, which is the intercept. Plus, and I'm just rounding these numbers just to make sure, just to uh, go through this, and you can um, you can write these out to a couple of uh, decimal places. That'll be fine. So we'll just say 1.4 uh, times x1 plus, actually, it's going to be minus 0.75x2. And what's very important uh, here is to make sure that we're associating one point, uh, actually, one point four is what I had here with PE ratio and 0.75 with um, with risk. So make sure you don't get these confused. Don't uh, use them backwards, else you're not going to get the results you want. But that that is uh, that is the key uh, the key concept this week in terms of using Excel and getting making sure it's clear uh, what you're getting in these results and then how you use them. So I, again, uh, I hope this is helpful. There's, uh, uh, I'm sure there's going to be some questions, and that's fine. Uh, make sure that you've gone through the reading. I think it's easy to get bogged down in the reading this week because there's a lot of statistical derivations in there. And when you start looking at this, uh, uh, a lot of this uh, we're not going to get to this week. Uh, there's a lot of uh, really, really good information in here, uh, and you're going to learn more about uh, regression um, I'm sure at another time, but this is enough to get you started, enough to get us through one week of, um, of an intro to regression and get through the exercise in the case. So if there are any questions, uh, please don't hesitate, and I hope this is helpful uh, to get you started. Thanks, and have a great week.